This is the very, very special Canyon Speedmax CF SLX of World Time Trial Champion Tony Martin of Katusha Alpacin. This could well be one of the trickiest bikes at the Tour de France. Now, before we get started with the prototype and one-off components that are littered all over this bike, let's tackle that paint job. That is super cool. So this is a Kraftwerk inspired bike. Now Kraftwerk, hopefully I don't have to explain to too many of you, but they were the first electronic band ever, basically. And their hometown is here in Dusseldorf, where the Tour de France is starting. The Canyon founder and CEO, Roman Arnold, is a big Kraftwerk fan. And so he wanted to take the opportunity of the tour starting in Dusseldorf and the fact that he's a huge fan to do something to pay tribute to them. So this is it, this is the creation. And actually there's also a small range of bikes on sale as well. No word yet as to whether Tony Martin is a fan of Kraftwerk, but even if he doesn't like the band's music, He's got to love that paint job. That is super cool. So the Canyon Speedmax is a pretty well established bike. It's been winning at world tour level for a year or so now. And actually it's also been winning in triathlons with Jan Frodeno pretty much dominating the sport aboard one of these. But what's been really interesting for me was talking to the guys at Canyon. So although Tony is a four time world time trial champ, when he signed up with Katusha Alpacin and therefore swapped bike sponsors, he went straight back into the wind tunnel and started refining his position yet further. And so there are one or two super trick bits on here, including these armrest mounts here. So this is a result of that wind tunnel testing. They're 3D printed in Canyon's HQ and they allow Tony to get his forearms in a slightly up tilted position, but then his hands are much flatter and that was the most aero position that they could find. Otherwise though, the frame and the handlebars are all actually completely stock from Canyon. So you've got these super cool integrated handlebars there and complete with the collaboration with Ergon, who's another famous German brand for the contact points. So they've got medical grade foam on the armrest pads, perhaps less important for a 15 minute time trial at the Tour de France, and more important for an Ironman. But nevertheless, that's gonna keep Tony nice and comfortable. And then also the grips here on the end of the extensions so particularly on a wet day like today, that could well come in very handy. So we've already ticked off one piece of bespoke componentry with the armrest mounts there, but I'm kneeling right next to another two. You'll recognize, I'm sure, the silhouette of Zip's sawtooth rim profile, but what you won't recognize is the depth here. So previously, Zip only have the 454, so that is around a 50 millimeter deep wheel with those indentations that are about five millimeters deep. Now, pretty revolutionary when it was launched back in October, but now there is this one. There is no official word as to what it's called, but if I was a betting man, I'd say that looks like an 808 depth. And if we're gonna keep the same theme running through the range, I'd say that could well be an 858 and it's also a clincher as well. So Tony's always uh, caused a little bit of controversy by the fact that he has dabbled with clincher tires and he is doing so again today. And it's also a 23 millimeter width, which is narrow by today's standards. But from talking with Zips engineers, it is still aerodynamically the fastest width of tire. But this is no ordinary tire either. This is a prototype Continental tyre. So it's a Grand Prix TT, but we can tell by the little branding on there that this is not a stock tyre as yet. No word from Continental as to quite what it is, but you can imagine from the fact that it's on Tony Martin's bike that it is going to be lightning fast. Now there isn't a pair of them on here though today. Because it's so wet, at the moment Tony is running a GP Force at the back, so that's the rear specific tyre that Continental make. But if it dries up, then potentially we could see a pair of these. This rear tyre is actually slightly wider than the front. It's 25 millimetres wide. So aerodynamics is perhaps fractionally less important at the rear of the bike because the air is already turbulent. So you can get away with being slightly wider and therefore benefit presumably from the slightly lower rolling resistance that you do get from wider tyres. It's mounted to a Zip Super 9 carbon disc wheel as well. Now then, let's talk about the componentry on this bike as well. We've still got a couple more completely bespoke bits there. We've got this huge chainring here. It's a 58 tooth chainring. And you'll notice there's a definite absence of a front derailleur here. 
and therefore an inner chainring. And so if you look closely, it's actually a surround one by chainring. So that's where they've got uh, what's called a narrow wide tooth profile. So every other tooth is wider and the older ones in the middle are therefore slightly narrower. And that means that the chain is held on much, much more securely. You couldn't shift from there, but if you've only got one chain ring, it's perfect. And that allows Tony to get rid of his front derailleur, which other riders have tried in the past in time trials because it's more aerodynamic, but they've lost their chains and therefore lost the race. I'm thinking about David Miller here in 2003. What is interesting though, is normally with a SRAM one by system, you'd have a special rear derailleur which has got a clutch, so like an extra strong spring. Tony hasn't got that, so presumably he's banking on the fact that this is a slightly smoother course, just so that he doesn't lose that chain. He's also running, as well as a 58 tooth chain ring, an 11 to 30 cassette. Now it's not as big as he does go, he often rides a 32 cassette, but 11 to 30, still quite a broad range on there. And in order to do so, he's then having to use a SRAM Y-Fly rear derailleur, so it's got a slightly longer cage on there. And basically, he's banking on the fact that he's not gonna need a small gear. The average speed here probably could be about 54, 55K an hour. There is a lot of talk and speculation around the gear ratios that Tony Martin chooses to use in time trials. A 58.11 is a huge gear, and so it's not often that he'll be in it, even though he does tend to pedal with a reasonably slow cadence. So the speculation is that he then spends more time in the middle of the block on the cassette, and therefore the chain line will be optimized, and that theoretically would reduce resistance coming from the drivetrain. Tony's running 175 millimeter long SRAM red cranks on there, and you'll see there's also a Quark D0 power meter. I would love to know what kind of data that records. And then on the end of those 175 mm cranks, he's also got Look Keo blades as well. Now the way Tony shifts through his 11 gears is using the SRAM blips. So those are the kind of remote satellite shifters and he's got four on here. So he's got two on the extensions down here and then he's got one very neatly tucked in either end of the skis there. Now you remember with SRAM ETAP that you use your left hand to shift up the cassette and then you use your right hand to shift down the cassette. So that'll be the same on all of these four contact points. But of course, given that there's no front derailleur, he has no call to press both at the same time to shift a front chain ring. And the last bit of this bike that is unique to Tony is the sandpaper that is stuck to his saddle with grip tape. Now, I'd say this is almost infamous. A lot of us have seen the photographs of what happens. Now, it's not just the grip tape and the sandpaper stuck to his saddle. It's also the fact that he has bespoke skin suits made by a tailor close to his home. And they actually sew another patch of grip tape onto his chamois so that he has really, really, really firm contact patch between basically his body and also the seat. Apparently he only gets three uses out of each skin suit before they have to go in the bin. Anyway, that grip tape is stuck to a Celitalia team issue 